Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And a welcome to the celebration of the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to any visitors among us, and to those watching this liturgy via the television broadcast. All are invited to enjoy a pancake breakfast upstairs in the Fleming Hall following this Mass. Our presider is Father Michael Krenick. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning and welcome. We begin this very nice warm weekend with the remembering of how God has loved us throughout the ages. But for those times that we have failed to see that gift of God's love, for those times that we have sinned, let us now seek God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out, both in word and deed, that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Holy Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, 
God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you. Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future, all belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you, on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise in the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm wondering if anybody will raise their hand. Are you perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect? Am I the only one? <laughs> when we hear that last part of the Gospel today, there are times when we might think, that's impossible. How can we be made perfect? Well, Jesus began our gospel with a few ways that we can strive for perfection. <coughs> Love those who hate you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, offer the other. If someone wants your tunic, give them your cloak as well. If someone presses you into service for one mile, go two miles. Love those who hate you. Be kind and greet everyone. 
the perfection that Jesus is talking about in our gospel today is not that we will never falter. But he wants us to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. And what was the way that God was perfect? By sending his Son into the world, who was willing to suffer, die, for each one of us. In other words, he sent love into the world so that we might embrace that love. So if we are going to be perfect, we need to love unconditionally. For some, it might be a little tougher. If you're a strong Democrat or strong Republican, sometimes it's a little harder to see that love, especially in an election year. If we are conservative or liberal, sometimes it's hard to see that love in the person around us. However, it's precisely what Jesus invites us to do. Look for the good that is in those around us. Try to treat others as you yourself would like to be treated. Give to those who ask of you. And I don't say that just because it's in the scripture, because we also are doing the Catholic Services Appeal this weekend. And so the Catholic Services Appeal reaches out in 20 different ministries to give to people who may not have an opportunity otherwise. When we are trying to be kind to those around us, it is not just credited to us, but it is credited to the gift of faith. And when we proclaim our faith in word and action, it is then that we see the goodness all around us. So as we come today to celebrate this Eucharist, let us be nourished by his word and by the body and blood of Christ to go out and love unconditionally, to become perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, to love unconditionally, to ask God to strengthen our faith and help us to proclaim it in all things. And as I promised, we are doing the Catholic Services Appeal, and this year we have a small little um, movie, or whatever they're calling it this day. Um, it's actually quite good this year. I actually rather enjoyed it when I listened to it, so <laughs> please listen closely to it. Everyone, please take a seat for an announcement from the Catholic Services Appeal. Please fill out a pledge card located at the end of the pews and drop it into the baskets being passed around now. When you give to the Catholic Services Appeal, it's an opportunity to make a substantial difference in the lives of thousands of people throughout our 12th county area. <clears throat> I said, the appeal is an opportunity to make a substantial difference. The funds raised by the appeal go towards supporting 20 designated ministries all across the Archdiocese. Yes, Frank, I'm talking to you. That, I don't know where the money for the... I don't know where the money for the appeal goes. No problem, Frank. Let's explore some of the ministries supported by the appeal 7,500 nights of housing and emergency shelter to those in need. 265,000 meals and snacks served annually. 3.9 million pounds of food distributed through 31 local food pantries each year. 1,300 women and families served by pro-life outreach centers each year. Over 100,000 Catholics served annually by hospital chaplains. Over 2.5 million in student scholarships and funding, including every one of our Catholic elementary schools as well as Catholic high schools. Over 3,000 teens and college-aged young people active in Catholic ministries. 52 men studying for the priesthood for the Archdiocese of St. Paul and Minneapolis. That's 20 ministries serving over 175,000 recipients each year. Wow. 
I had no idea. Just think of it this way. When you give today in any amount, parishioners just like you are doing the exact same thing. But even more than that, we're honoring Christ's call for us to serve the poor, support life, and strengthen the faith throughout the Twin Cities and surrounding communities, both suburban and rural. So Frank, what's it gonna be? Count me in. Now, where's that basket? Oh, don't worry about the basket, Frank. You can mail in your pledge card or contribute today electronically with your laptop or mobile device. <laughs> Just go to give csaf.org to donate today. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for your generous donation to the Catholic Services Appeal Foundation. Your assistance transforms lives across our entire archdiocese and at our Venezuelan mission. May God bless you for your faithfulness. Great job. Thank you. Go to givecsaf.org on your cell phone and give to the appeal. As I said, it was much more entertaining than most years. <laughs> In the pews today, there is a sheet that talks a little bit more about the Catholic Services Appeal. You should have, if you've given in the past, received an envelope already. But if not, or you've misplaced it, you can grab one. Those are also in the pews today. We would encourage you to take your time to look through how you might support these services within our archdiocese. Now in faith we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our God, who is slow to anger and abounding in kindness, we make these prayers for ourselves and for all who are in need. May the Catholic Services Appeal receive the gifts needed to serve the material and spiritual needs of everyone in our Archdiocese. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May our elected representatives be guided by the spirit of compassion and divine wisdom. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May those who are ill, suffering, or oppressed experience the perfect love of our Heavenly Father. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May we who are gathered here carry loving kindness in our hearts for our families, friends, and all those we meet. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May our loved ones and all who have died rest in eternal peace. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us join together in praying our Archdiocesan Synod prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, make our ears to hear, make our eyes to see, make our mouths to speak, make our hearts to see, make our hands to reach out, and touch the world with your love. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, 
Pray for us. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that we may be that we may offer to the honor of your Majesty that. Let's pray that again that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Olaf, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share now with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Announcements this weekend. Please take time to complete the Archdiocesan-wide survey before March 1st. It is preferred that you complete the survey online, but you may request a paper copy at the front reception or during hospitality today. And more information is also on our website. Your contributions to the Catholic Services Appeal will support important ministries in our archdiocese and help us to reach our parish goal. You may use one of the CSA envelopes in the pews and uh, make sure that you identify St. Olaf as the church if you're a member here. This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, so Lent is beginning. Masses are at 6, 7, 10, 11, and noon, and 4 and 5, 15 p.m., with distribution of ashes at the end of each of those Masses. Please take a Lenten pew card for the scheduling of opportunities for prayer and spiritual growth here at St. Olaf during the season of Lent. And immediately following Mass today, we do have pancakes and eggs up in the upper room today. We encourage you to come and enjoy feast before Lent begins. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.